Hi, this is Chance McGee with an LPAC TV update. With the defeat of Kerry and McCain's defense of Obama's war powers violation, the president has been left standing by himself in the center of a growing recognition of his treasonous behavior. Today, Obama met with a small core of leading congressmen to negotiate raising the debt ceiling. And although no agreements were reached, his proposal for more cuts to Social Security has put many Democrats against him. Late last month, House Democrats warned that cuts to Social Security are a deal breaker. You want to fight? If anybody in this building wants to take on Social Security, privatize it, change the benefits by altering the consumer price index or by any other method, know this, you've got a fight on your hands. A House Democratic aide relayed that Pelosi was caught off guard when the Social Security cuts were brought up in the meeting. And Harry Reid said he will not be having a a press conference about it. But both have stated that they do not support Social Security cuts. All of this points to the fact that the typical party-line approach to politics has been broken down as those in Congress realize that Obama's allegiance is not to Democrats or Republicans, but to a foreign power. But despite this, the recognition is that Nero has chosen to turn his efforts towards the very unconstitutional action of getting rid of the debt ceiling by completely bypassing the Congress. But therein lies the irony of it all, for his defense is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. I think there are some people who are pretending not to understand it, who think that there's leverage for them in threatening a default. I don't understand it as a negotiating position. I mean, really, think about it. You're going to say that? Can I read you the 14th Amendment? Geithner, speaking as a representative of the administration, has made it very clear that he believes the 14th Amendment gives a president the legal right to extend the debt ceiling. But what is the 14th Amendment? The 14th Amendment was ratified in 1868 to deal with the overwhelming amount of debt incurred during the Civil War. It states that the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States, or any claim for the loss of emancipation of any slave. But all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. What Geithner argues is that if the president did not get support from Congress, he could simply use a unitary executive decree and do away with the debt ceiling by assuming it will suppress insurrection? Actually, I'm not sure how the 14th Amendment can reasonably be used for the administration's aim. In fact, it seems that it can only be used as a way to write off all the bailout debt, which is actually the source of the economic crisis to begin with. What is clear, though, is that this push for the 14th Amendment serves for nothing other than to shut down the discussion on Glass-Steagall, which will separate the legitimate debt, like pensions and retirement funds, from the illegitimate debt, such as the multi-trillion dollar bailout fraud. Congressman Tim Scott responded that this would be an impeachable offense, and others such as Dennis Kucinich have come to see Obama's actions as more than just dictatorial, but explicitly unconstitutional. Lyndon LaRouche commented that we are now seeing a nationalist bloc emerging in the Congress around crucial issues, such as Glass-Steagall and on the opposition to Obama's violation of the War Powers Resolution. This bloc is bipartisan, with a potential majority from both parties, which means that the typical party-line politics will not suffice for a president who is in practice a British agent. That's all for this report. Stay tuned for more.